Let's take a look at our last example for this lesson. The velocity of a particle as a function of time is given by the equation v of t equals 3t squared. The particle starts at position 0 at time 0. Find the slope of the velocity time graph as a function of time. That'll give you the particle's acceleration function. So acceleration is the slope of that vt graph, velocity versus time, which we could write as v prime of t, the first derivative of v, which is going to be the derivative with respect to t, the derivative with respect to time, of whatever that function is, 3t squared, which happens to be 6t. So the acceleration of the particle is equal to 6 times whatever the time happens to be. When you know the velocity function, you can find the acceleration. Yay, calculus. Find the area under the velocity time graph as a function of time to give you the particle's position function. All right, so position, we'll call that r, is going to be the integral of our velocity function with respect to time, which will be the integral of 3t squared dt, which will be t cubed plus our constant of integration. But here's one of those tricks to making that constant of integration go away. We know by one of our boundary conditions, that the position of our particle at time zero equals zero because that's given up here in the problem. So if r equals zero at time zero, well, that means if we plug zero in here for time zero, r must equal c. But r is zero at that time, so c must equal zero. Therefore, our total function is r equals t cubed. c is zero in this problem. So we were able to come up with the particle's position function based on its velocity. So we took the derivative in one direction to find the acceleration. We took the integral going the other way in order to find its change in position. All right, that hopefully gets you a feel for the type of math we'll be using in this course. Thank you for watching educator.com. Come back real soon. Make it a great day, everyone.